Hello, I'm Stephanie Quine with the Weekly Law Report. Here are our top stories of this week. Bullying is apparently on the rise in Australian workplaces and it's estimated to cost the economy around $36 billion a year. Despite this, there's no legal definition of bullying and no national system to address it. Now, a federal parliamentary committee says that's got to change. After receiving hundreds of submissions, the committee this week called for a common national definition of bullying and a common code of practice across all states. It also recommended new rights for workers to sue employers for bullying. Employment lawyer Rachel Drew is sceptical as to how this would work. We, we actually see both sides of bullying issues, both the injured worker who is the victim of bullying and the person who is accused of bullying. Mm. Um, so having seen both sides, I can see it, it's a very difficult issue to say there should be some legal liability arising from the act of bullying because it's it very, very subjective. What one person perceives as bullying, another person sees as, as just genuine management action. So it's very difficult to legislate around. Including it as part of work cover is, is very, very important in protecting the rights of workers to claim work cover compensation if they do suffer a stress injury, for example, from bullying is absolutely essential. I think we're a, a very long way from there being any national legislation around workplace harassment and bullying. Turning to the courts now and a landmark ruling will see two men face a criminal retrial over alleged insider trading. This month the High Court overturned an appeal by two Perth businessmen who claimed they were not guilty for insider trading because the information they received turned out to be completely made up. The University of Western Sydney's Professor Michael Adams, an expert in this field of law, explains. The two defendants decided to argue that in fact it was false information and as such fell outside the provisions of insider trading. Insider trading, of course, is trading on price sensitive uh, information which will have an impact on the share price and has to be confidential. And they said as it was false, that's not really information. To a lot of people's surprise, the district court threw the case out. Both accused, um, both defendants were acquitted and that was the end. Except the DPP decided to appeal uh, to the, originally the Court of Appeal and then to the High Court to make a determination whether false information was in fact capable of being used in insider trading. Well, the High Court ruled uh, in November that false information is still information and as such the allegations need to go and be tried in the district court of western australia and so the case has been referred back to a trial court but as a matter of principle you cannot argue that false information is in fact no information so the ordinary meaning of the words was given the verdict of the retrial in western australia will be significant as there have only been around 15 insider trading cases in australia most of them uncontested. In other news, 20 Victorian barristers have been appointed silk by Chief Justice Marilyn Warren. Three of the appointees were female while 17 were male. The successful senior counsel applicants range in age from 37 to 66 and come from most practice areas. 71 barristers applied for silk, only five of which were women. You can find a follow-up story on those silk appointments on our website now. Those are our featured stories today. Thanks for watching. You can follow us throughout the week on Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn to keep up with the latest news in Australian legal business. If you have any suggestions or feedback for the Weekly Law Report, you can email me. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you next week. I'm Stephanie Quine. Bye for now.